Well, hello, uh, Lumen Weekly. My name's David. You know, I was thinking um, earlier today, probably about 30 years ago it was for me in my own life where I was a young adult, uh, just out of high school, late, late teens, early 20s, when I was kind of thinking, what am I going to do with my life? I need some direction. I need some guidance. And well, for me, my story goes is that I found myself joining the United States Marine Corps. And as a young man in the Marine Corps, something happened in boot camp that it really was a significant point where it really became real to me. It was at the point where we had to uh, raise our right hand and, and, and really pledge and give an oath, pretty much saying that, that, that we will defend the Constitution of the United States and obey orders. But there was one line in that pledge that said this, that says, I will bear true faith and allegiance to the United States of America and to the president and to, to leaders. And you know what? When, when I think about that as a young man, that was a huge commitment that I was making. I, I was simply saying that I would give my life, if need be, in the cause of defense of, of this country um, that, that we live in. You know, I think today we're surrounded by commitment. So many commitments. People are asked to make commitments in marriages. You make a commitment to be with your spouse forever, but we know that those commitments aren't always kept. Uh, people are committed to their jobs. They, they have a job until a better job comes along. Uh, e even our cell phone companies ask us to commit to them and have a contract to them and, until a better deal comes along. And I know those commitments um, aren't at the, aren't at the uh, sacrifice, if you will, of somebody joining the military or committing their life. But my question is, today is what, what commitments and, and where, where do we make commitments in life? You know, I think about this because in the Gospel of John, he wrote the words of Jesus. When Jesus said this, he says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. He says, this bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Jesus is making a commitment there. But then he goes on a few verses later and he says this, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. You know, when I read this, I really think of the word commitment. Not, not a commitment like we make when we're getting a new cell phone coverage. But I mean, Jesus here, he was all in. He says that he was given his life for the world. His flesh pouring out his blood. He even says this, that, that it would be a, 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 an offering, if you will. It, it seems to me that, that he's suggesting that if we also commit, if we also partake in this commitment, he's committing, he's all in. Jesus says, hey, I want you to be all in. I want you to partake. If you partake, if you, if you eat of my flesh, drink of my blood, that you will have everlasting life. Seems like a, a huge commitment here, not like one that we make with our girlfriend or boyfriend or, or with our job. But this is a commitment that you're going to be all in. In reading this, I, I was just wondering, what was the biggest commitment that you've ever made in your life? Was it a worthwhile commitment? I, I, I'm not talking about these small, but in your own life, have you ever made a commitment? Or have you ever given your life to or for anything? And how do you respond to Jesus' offer of eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood? I'll tell you, this passage is really challenging me, and I'm kind of wrestling with it myself. I hope it gives you some food for thought, if you will, as you think about this. Until next time, Luma Weekly, we'll talk to you later.